let's solve some explicit functions for their concavity. Now remember that if the second derivative is negative, we have a concave down, or the function's graph is concave down on that interval. And if the second derivative is positive on some interval, the function's graph is concave up on that interval. Our first function is x squared minus 2x plus 7. If we take its first derivative, we get 2x minus 2. If we take its second derivative, we get positive 2. What that tells me is that this function is concave up on its entire domain. So it's not concave down at all. Okay, well let's continue. If I have this function, I can take its first derivative 4x cubed minus 9x squared, and then I can take its second derivative as 12x squared minus 18x, which I can then factor into, pull out a 3x, 4x minus, I guess I could pull out a 6. Two x minus three. Now, the reason you want to do this, you want to you want to factor it into these common things, is we know we can then find where the fun or the second derivative is zero. By finding where the second derivative is zero, we know that. But since it's continuous, this function here is clearly continuous. If it goes and hits zero, it either goes through it and has to be positive between the next zero or has to be negative between the next zero. And we know it actually isn't going to be constant. That has to do with a little bit about differentiability because you can't just hit zero and plane off. You would have a differentiability problem there. So <clears throat> anyway, this thing segments, it's zero when this is, this function is zero when x is zero or when x is three halves. So we have zero, three halves. We have positive and negative infinity. So all we have to do is pick random values. So let's do negative one, one, two, and plug those values into the second derivative, and that will tell us about the concavity. So if I pick negative one, that's negative six, negative two. So negative two minus three is negative five times a negative six is a positive 30. So that tells me that this is concave up here. Now between, if I plug in one, I get positive six. Two minus three is negative one. So this is negative six. It's down. If I plug two, I get a positive 12. Four minus three is one. So I get a positive 12 overall. So it's concave up, which is what we might expect because this is this is kind of a it, it's kind of parabolic it's not parabolic but it has that that bowl shape going up so you expect it to be concave up on the edges and it's going to have a little hump in the middle for which it's concave down so From negative infinity to zero, unioned with three halves to infinity, it's concave up, and it's concave down from zero to three halves. Okay, let's continue on. H of x is 22 over x squared plus 12. So that tells me that the derivative is going to be negative 44 x x squared plus 12 squared. Now that, that was a little bit of fanciness because I wrote rewrote this as 22 times x squared plus 12 to the negative 1. So I bring down the negative 1. That gets me negative 22. 
I subtract one from the power, that gets me a negative two power, and then I take the derivative of the inside, which is two x. So two x, that makes that 44, but it was already negative, so I have a negative 44 x. I know that's a lot of work there, but that is, that's how I arrived at that derivative. Now I can do the same thing here and take the double derivative. It's gonna be a little more complicated We're going to have to go, uh, I'm going to have to use a quotient rule here. It's going to be a little difficult to do in my head. So we're going to do negative 44 x squared plus 12 squared plus 8. So let's see, low low d high minus high, which is 44x, d low, you end up bringing down the 2 and getting a 2x, so you end up multiplying by 4, so you have 176x squared, x squared plus 12, all over x squared plus 12 to the fourth. So if we multiply this out, we end up with x squared plus 12, 44x squared plus 12. So then we end up with 4x squared minus x squared, so that's 3x squared minus 12. So 132, that, so this actually then factors into plus two, it's minus two all over. That is a lot of work. That is a lot of hidden work that was done there. But effectively what happened here is I pulled out a 44 x squared plus 12 what was left over here was a 4x squared. And then what was left over here was the 44 got pulled out and one of the x squared plus 12s got pulled out. So what remained when you distribute this negative was a negative x squared and a negative 12. So you ended up with 4x squared minus x squared minus 12. So then you combine the x squareds, you got 3x squared minus 12. Well, if you pull out another three, you end up with x squared minus four, which is x plus two times x minus two. So all that, to, all this, well, this is always gonna be positive no matter what you plug in for x. This is gonna be positive no matter what you plug in for x. So the only things you really care about are that plus and minus two. So you have negative infinity, negative two, positive two, positive infinity. So we just need to pick values between there. So let's try negative three, zero, and three. And we just need to plug it in here. Well, when I plug in negative three, I get a negative one and a negative five. So those, those negatives cancel, end up with something positive overall. When I plug in zero, I get a positive two and a negative two. So that actually comes out as a negative overall. When I plug in three, I get positive, positive. So this is concave up on negative infinity to negative three, unioned with three, I'm sorry, to negative two, unioned with two to infinity. concave down from negative two to two. Let me check my cheat sheet, make sure that everything looks right there. All right, cheat sheet confirmed. And finally, we have seven X minus nine tangent X. Now we only wanna care about the negative pi over two to pi over two. And that's because this function gets a little wonky as you move along, the numbers get a lot harder. So if we take its derivative, k prime of x, we get seven 
minus 9 secant squared x. If we take its double derivative, well, the 7 will disappear. So then we have to use the chain rule. We end up with negative 18 secant of x, but the derivative of secant of x is secant tangent. So we end up with secant squared x tangent of x, which may be easier to write in terms of its elementary sine and cosine functions, which is negative 18 sine of x over cosine cubed x. Which, I don't know, maybe that's easier for you to think about. Um, you know what? It probably isn't. It's probably easier to think about this. The reason why is because secant squared is always going to be positive. So we only really need to think about that tangent of x. So think about that in terms of sine of x, cosine of x, whatever is easier. Well, when I think about tangent of x, when I think about tangent from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, so that's quadrant 4 up to quadrant 1, quadrant 4 up to quadrant 1. What I know is that this function is 0 when, when x is 0. So I really only have to worry about the edge, negative pi over 2, to 0, to positive pi over 2. Those are really my only considerations. So then I would pick, let's just pick negative pi over 4 and positive pi over 4. Now what I know is that tangent of pi over 4 is 1. So that's 1, some positive number, times a negative number. So that tells me this is less than 0. That tells me this is down. If I plug in negative pi over 4, tangent of negative pi over 4 is negative 1 times a positive number times negative 18's positive value. So this is concave up. And those are my values there. So that is the basics of how we find the concavity given this information. Now we're going to talk about this a little more in the upcoming videos, but I want to go ahead and talk about it now. There is a test for a second derivative test for concavity, which says if the second, if it tells you a little bit about the first derivative and finds a second derivative there, in, a, in retrospect, maybe we won't worry about that here. So um, I was thinking it might make sense, but we've already spent enough time here and we'll talk about this more in upcoming videos.